Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Now, as I said, we have Jordan Stein of GOA joining us. Um, Jordan, uh, I, I think that uh, the elections and uh, I don't know what's the best way to put it, but the crazy that came out of, of, of the elections um, have got a lot of us thinking about what's the future of the Second Amendment here in America. And there is a way that we can at least uh, gum up the works or put a roadblock in gun control. Do you want to explain uh, what that is to the folks out there and how they can do that? Absolutely. Well, you know, it, it's kind of kind of crazy how this election has turned out um, with uh you know, the, all the drama surrounding the presidential election and, and Trump and, and Biden, whether, you know, it looks like Biden's going to win, which is not a good sign for our, our gun rights. And and the Democrats uh, retain control of the House. So that uh, looks to the Senate. Right. Mm -hmm. And there were several hotly contested races. And right now, how it's broke down is we have a 48 50 uh, divide in the Senate. There's 48 Democrats. Mm -hmm. And there are 50 Republicans, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it, as it's looking like Biden's going to win the presidency, uh, Kamala Harris, in the event of a tie, gets to uh, cast the tie-breaking vote in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So that makes these Senate to these Senate races, which are in Georgia, um, very important. Perhaps some of the most important elections that we've ever had. You know, I know that term is tossed around all the time. You know, every election is the most important election of our lifetime. But, yeah. you know, I truly believe it, that it is. And that's why GOA is going all in uh, on th this election. If uh, if th those two Democrats get elected um, and there's it's a 50-50 split, mm -hmm. which is really a Democrat majority, mm -hmm. there is very little that that we can do to stop it because their game plan is to eliminate the filibuster, mm -hmm. which it has been our tool that we've used for decades to, to, to have debates and stop gun control. Mm -hmm. They will pack the court with anti-gun judges, and then they'll ha pass statehood to D.C. and Puerto Rico and, and maybe even other places uh, that will permanently submit an anti-gun majority in the Senate forever. So uh, Republicans or, or pro-gunners can never have a majority in the Senate, and and we've really lost it. So that's yeah. why it is that important. Yeah, and elections um, may never be the same ever again. <laughs> exactly. And then you have Probably all the not. other yeah. drama going around about fraud and all. So, mm -hmm. so that's why that's why we're going all in on this. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, GOA, at least in my time with GOA, is launching the biggest get out the vote effort that we've ever done. It, 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 especially with my time with GOA, I've never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are we're uh, having a get out the vote efforts and that includes uh, pretty much two folds, a uh, door knocking and making phone calls. Okay. So, um, you know, why would you door knock? Well, you know, uh, studies and, and other political technology have shown that when you actually make voter contact with people, that it really makes a huge difference in getting out the vote. So we have 10,000 of these lovely uh, little literature package, which kind of goes over what I was just saying about the Senate and everything, and then it mm -hmm. breaks down the candidates. You know, we have Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue. Those are the Republican candidates. Those are the, the pro-gun choices in, in this election. So that's the folks we're targeting. But by going out and knocking on doors um, and making phone calls, you submit the pro uh, the pro gun voters, and you can outreach to other people who aren't necessarily will be targeted by the Republican Party, and that's what we're, what GOA is doing. We're targeting independent gun owners, Democrat gun owners, and 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 additionally to the, some hardcore gun rights people um, to hit people who the Republican Party really neglects sometimes. So that's why we're doing that. And we're and uh, it I say it's absolutely critical. And, and that's the reason why I came on is because we need volunteers. We, the more people we have to do this, the greater our impact will be. I was, I was door knocking today, um, you know, it, just my wife and I, we just got here. And, um, you know, we, we door knocked about 50 doors this afternoon. Mm 
And, okay. he, and that's a lot. And we're going pretty hard. But, you know, we want to be doing 500 doors a day. We want to knock 10,000 doors. And that's why we need help. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe a link's already been shared in the chat. It's gunowners.org slash volunteer. Mm -hmm. You go there. You can put down your information. Uh, and then we will contact you to get plugged in. We, we have trainings for door knocking and, and phone calls. We will give you all the tools you need to uh, be successful and, and do this. But we need boots on the ground. We need, we need people doing this. And the more people we have, the better. So Yeah. Um, so it, feel free to jump in, Roy or Sean, as well here. Um, there, there's there's a lot of stuff going on here. As Jordan said, there are links in the description of this video, um, as well as the chat here. And I encourage everyone watching us to um, share those links if you if you can help out in some way. Even if you're not in Georgia, you can do stuff to help with these efforts here. All right. Uh, go ahead, Roy. Uh, one of the things I've already seen some other folks in in the gun world already tweeting and and and. Uh, social media posting that even if you are not in Georgia or you're not close to Georgia and you have no plans to go to Georgia, you know, donate a hundred or fifty bucks to uh, Purdue or Loeffler to to the to the campaign. I mean, they can use every single penny. Mm -hmm. And uh, something else I wanted to put out there um, to go along with what you were saying is the people on the other side are a hundred percent serious about winning those two races. I don't know if you guys saw it, but Andrew Yang, who was actually a, an early Democrat party candidate mm -hmm. for president, he was the, yeah. uh, the guy who ran on the universal basic income, which, yeah. is, which is kind of like a kinder, gentler name for socialism. Right, um, right. He announced on Twitter that he and his wife were moving to Georgia long enough to qualify to vote so they could go vote blue. In which, the is which is illegal, which is illegal. Right. But yeah. I mean, it's it's I mean, they would be basically recreating their 1845 border ruffian strategy uh, with Kansas and Missouri. But but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's how serious it is that mm -hmm. they're encouraging people to move to Georgia to vote blue. If volunteer, if you can, if you can't make it. Mm -hmm. Donate 50 bucks to one of the campaigns. Yeah, there's so there's so much you can do. Uh, Sean, did you want to jump in here before we go back to Jordan? I'm good, man. Yeah. Um, there's so much that you guys could do. Just help get this effort out there. Um, you know, I think it is a big deal that you, people often say, like, well, what's GOA actually doing? Right? I know you guys get those questions as well, Jordan. Are they actually doing something? Are they out there? They're effective. I could say that they're not the biggest organization in the world. They can definitely use more support, and you guys can help them. But I'm telling you, with the support that they have, they, they pour most of that money into fighting these anti-Second Amendment things that are going on. And then efforts like this, you know, Jordan and his wife have temporarily moved out there. You guys aren't going to be voting illegally like Andrew Yang, I'm taking it. But, you know, they've moved out there and they're on the ground doing stuff. Right, Jordan's boots on the ground and yeah. salutes her. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us some other ways out, out there, Jordan, that folks can help out with these efforts. Well, again, if you can't come to Georgia, which I understand not everyone can do, phone calls. You, mm -hmm. you can make phone calls. This is this election will be decided by voter contact. You know, the more voters that we can get uh, mobilized to get to the polls, you know, that that will decide the election, decide the Senate, decide the future of the, of the Second Amendment. And we have all the tools you need. We will, we will train you. There's an app that you can use. Your phone, your phone number won't be used and put out there. It'll, it'll all be done through GOA's uh, apps and, and software. And we will guide you through every step. So phone calls, donating is, is, is excellent. Um, money's the lifeblood of campaigns. That's, that keeps the ads running. That keeps uh, everything, um, all the wills going on the machine. Um, you know, uh, GOA is also doing ads and, and uh, robocalls and, mm -hmm. and all other campaign efforts in addition to the boots on the ground effort. Um, so th that's it. We, we have to, to focus on this um, if we want to keep our, our freedom. You mm -hmm. know, it, it really just comes down to that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to jump in on that. Hank. Okay. I think uh, one of the things that maybe some of the viewers might not be completely aware of is the concept of a supermajority. You want to jump into that a little bit and mm -hmm. what's potentially at risk here? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we, uh, what did you want to point out about that? Roy, what's the, um, what's the risk that we face if we have democratic control of everything? 
They won't sure. me- they well, won't mess around like we did, but go ahead, Roy. <laughs> right. Right. Go ahead and, and just uh, you can Google it. The website's still up. I saw it this afternoon. It's Biden's Joe site. Biden's plan for gun safety. Mm-hmm. If you are unaware of the website, which is the official Biden campaign website, Joe Biden's plan for gun safety, just mm-hmm. Google Joe Biden gun safety. Mm-hmm. You, there'll be a fundraiser page. You have to click on the little X in the upper right hand corner and go past. But it's a whole incredibly horrible, awful litany of things that Joe Biden has been saying for months he mm-hmm. wants to be able to do. Uh, one of the things he wants to do is he wants to ban the manufacture and sale of pretty much every single semi-automatic rifle and handgun. He also wants to ban the manufacture and sale of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. Uh, something that that, that kind of gets my attention because of my current job, he kind of sort of says he wants to ban and all online sales of ammo, gun parts, and guns. Mm-hmm. All online sales. Now, even I was even thinking the other day, I mean, that would probably even apply to something like AR15.com's equipment exchange because those are online sales, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything. There's all sorts of horrible, awful things. If you have an AR15 or any rifle that takes a, a semi automatic rifle that takes a detachable magazine, you would be allowed to keep it if you registered it under the NFA and paid a $200 transfer tax per rifle and per magazine. I'm not even going to try to do the math. I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, scro- I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling through behind this me right now. There's $400 worth of transfer tax behind me right now. That's Yang money right there. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, hey, 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 <laughs> me up with my universal basic income, baby. I got to use that. I'm. Uh, I was scrolling through that, by the way. And if folks want, uh, if they, if they, if folks out there want us to, we can actually go through those things, uh, you know, one at a time. But there's a right. long list, and and the really, cra- the really. So today, actually, Wednesday's always haircut days around here for me, right? Um, but the thing is, is that in the barbershop, I was having this conversation with someone, and he was telling me, oh, Joe Biden's not trying to take your guns. You guys are always saying he's trying to take your guns. I said, can you do me a favor? This guy was, you know, uh, we always have conversations, and we have civil conversations that get a little, you know, the volume gets right. a little escalated. But I asked him to go look it up. When he went to look it up, that was the end of that conversation. Right. The minute it's, he started that, scrolling through that thing, he was all done. There. He was done yeah. talking, like, you know, fighting that. So there, there's there's one, Can I, I want to talk about one that hasn't gotten any press. It's way down the list. If you go to Joe Biden's site and go mm-hmm. way down the list, mm-hmm. it's access, giving minors access to guns because I have a 13-year-old son. Mm-hmm. And what Joe Biden says on his official page is he wants to bring both criminal and civil uh, prosecutions against parents or guardians who give ch- children, minors, access to guns. And the terrifying part is, Read the last sentence, regardless of whether or not the juvenile actually gets possession of the gun. Mm -hmm. My my son taking a gun into his own hands to go to the shooting range, he doesn't even want to prosecute me for that. He wants to prosecute me for having guns in the house with my son. And I'll I'll show that right now on the screen for anyone who wants to see that. It says, hold adults accountable for giving minors access to firearms. Biden supports legislation holding adults criminally and civilly liable for directly or negligently giving a minor access to a firearm, regardless of whether the minor actually gains possession of the firearm. Um, Regardless of whether the minor actually gets possession. So if he's just in in the same house as the gun, does that count as access? Of course. I mean, it depends if someone wants to use that against you and, and, uh, you know, red flag you or something like that or take your firearms rights away, regardless of how responsible you're being. And let's let's bear something in mind here. This is the reason why that guy stopped having that particular conversation and went on to another one with me. This is just Biden's ideas. (laughs) This is not even what they're going to like when they try to start making all this long list. When they start making laws out of that, you have no idea what's in there until they actually do it. Right, right, Jordan? Right. Absolutely. I mean, Joe Biden ran on the most radical gun control platform in history. You know, you look back to Obama, especially in 08, he was kind of quiet about the guns. You know, he, he didn't say much, this or that or whatever. And he really didn't have a, a voting history in the Senate because he was never there. Right. Um, 
you know, and uh, and even in 2012, to, to some extent, she was so quiet about the guns. But, you know, Hillary Clinton, she ran on a gun control platform and thankfully she lost. Uh, and Biden is is the first president to run on a platform. And I know there's still a lot of controversy surrounding the presidential election. But but if the electors appoint him in December, he'll be the first president to run on a gun control platform. And what scares me the most, really, is who he's going to appoint as right. the gun czar. Uh, Beto, take your yeah. AR-15 O'Rourke, mm-hmm. right. you know, and, and we all know how anti-gun he is. Mm-hmm. And and truly, this is why the Senate is so important, mm-hmm. because if if we can get, you know, the 52-48 majority, and I look, mm-hmm. Republicans are not always pro-gun. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I hate on Republicans a lot, but... You know, I do That's truth. That That's facts. We, we have to hold them accountable. Uh-huh. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But I believe that in this scenario, they, they should stop most of, of the nonsense. Mm-hmm. Even if it's purely a partisan matter, they should stop most of the nonsense. And then we can work on getting pro-gunners in the House in 2022 and then a pro-gun president in 2024. You yeah. know, that, that's what we have to do. But if we don't, then, then it's gone. And, and that's what's at stake. It, it, it truly is, is, is at stake here. And that's what we're, we're having to do. You know, I, I campaigned a lot uh, at the local level during the election uh, for program candidates. And, and I was like, well, after the election, you know, finally, maybe I can take some time off. And maybe get the or <laughs> this something. is 2020, no, homie. But no, not the year for that. Right? No when, days when off in 2020. Senate was, was going to be hanging in the balance. And like this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we got to do something. Yeah. And that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm asking y'all to join me and, yeah. and you know, save the Senate and save the country. It's very, very important. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.